Hello, hi folks, Dom Lawson here from Metal Hammer Magazine with another one of those iron sandwich things uh, with which you can squander your lunch hour or whatever it is you foul people do when you're watching me talking rubbish. Um, uh, yeah, today, um, I was just thinking the other day, because I don't have much else to do except sit around contemplating musical things. Um, just about how you know the, one of the well, I suppose one of the interesting things, but also one of the annoying things about being into heavy music is how how kind of uh, factionalised and tribal it can be, and how you know you have uh, <clears throat> just as an example, and this is just you know um, one aspect of it is that you know you have old farts like me who grew up listening to metal in the eighties, and uh, although I love lots of modern stuff and as much modern stuff as anyone else, in fact, but. Um, I, you know, I I've, I feel kind of firmly entrenched in in heavy metal culture, and I feel that the culture is as important as as the music to some degree. That you know, it's um, it's an integral part of what what makes metal metal. You know, uh, which doesn't mean the bands that don't buy into the culture don't get to be called metal because if your music is metal then that's the end of that uh but i i just i ha i have more enthusiasm and passion for for people that are wholeheartedly into it rather than just kind of picking and choosing the bits they like and then you know dressing up like twits and with stupid haircuts you know that's just me it's just my personal taste but then of course you you know there's a generation of kids that didn't grow up with that and, and people that aren't you know that for some whatever reason find heavy metal culture is not something they can relate to, and all, but they like heavy music, and um, and they kind of reject it, you know. And anything that came before Pantera is seen is seen as being old-fashioned in some way, even though you know most of these modern metal bands are actually doing, <laughs> you know, kind of just slightly updated versions of things that were happening 15, 20 years ago. You know, they just don't know it because they're not, you know, into metal enough to realise it. But anyway, there you go. Um, but the, I think you know that. The reason why this stuff can be annoying too, I mean, that makes it interesting, you know, because obviously, you know, you have different perspectives and people view different bands in different ways. Uh, but from my perspective, I I kind of grew up, I've always listened to lots of different types of music and although metal is, you know, is certainly the thing I identify with most closely and strongly, um, I've also always listened to punk rock my entire life as well. I grew up listening to the Sex Pistols and the Damned and Discharge and the Exploited and GBH and, and One Way System and, you know, mainly British punk, but also, you know, Black Flag and Bad Brains and, and uh, Dead Kennedys are a huge band for me as well, you know. And so, um, for me, the, the idea that punk and metal shouldn't mix is ridiculous because they have mixed on countless occasions and, um, and to great effect. Um, and I think part of the problem is now that you have this awful commercial... You know, essentially pop music masquerading as punk that, that certain magazines and certain you know media outlets, shall we say, promote heavily. Uh, the kind of hot topic view of of punk rock is just this kind of bland pop music with loud guitars. You know, and and so as a result, a lot of metalheads are kind of you know you mentioned the punk scene and they just imagine the Warp Tour and Good Charlotte and you know. And, it's just all that awful shit that sounds the same, you know, and that has no balls to it and no no musical in intelligence as far as I can see. It's just, you know, bland pop songs. But anyway, that's, you know, that's not that there isn't good pop punk, but it's just, it's, you know, in very slender su supply for every newfound glory. There's about 40 bands that really, really suck, you know. But anyway, metal and punk do go together extraordinarily well. And so, um, you know, sometimes when, when people moan about uh, subgenres with core at the end of them and say that, you know, it's not proper metal because it's metal core or it's this this and that core, whatever it might be, that, um, you know, it's it's a bit of a nonsense because the, the genres have always been kind of interwoven. You know, the whole point of hardcore in the first place was that it was, you know, it was a more a heavier and more aggressive version of punk rock, um, which in itself means that it's closer to metal than it was prior, you know. And then obviously thrash comes out of, you know, people that were into metal and punk, so the speed of punk married to the, the heaviness of metal. You know, it's not it's not rocket science, this stuff, really, you know. So they've always been closely linked, you know, and, uh, and, and you know, it always makes me laugh when people moan about deathcore as if somehow deathcore is entirely separate from death metal when really, you know, even bands like Suffocation were obviously heavily influenced by hardcore bands, you know, and uh, and listened to that stuff and, and incorporated that into what they did. You know, breakdowns just used to be called slow bits when I was a kid, you know, but, um, <laughs> but just because they're, you know, precise or whatever and, and have a groove to them people say oh, well, that never happened before Pantera came along well yes it did but anyway today I'm going to talk to you about a band that I think incorporate all that's great about metal and punk in one uh, supremely violent and, and raw and 
aggressive package, and that's Black Breath, who are from uh, Washington State in the US. I think they're based in Seattle. And um, if you haven't come across Black Breath yet, then I can't recommend them highly enough. For one, they appear to be named after a, a repulsion song, which is reason enough to get into them. Um, but this is their second full-length album. Uh, it's called Sentence to Life. It's out on Southern Lord Records. Um, and what I love about Black Breath is that they seem to be uh, opening a door for people that would that probably come to them via the hardcore scene rather than from the metal direction, because essentially their sound is early '90s Sunlight Studios in in Sweden uh, death metal. I mean, it, you know that. Their entire sound is really based on the first couple of Entombed and Dismember records, you know, and and um, they have that that kind of buzzsaw guitar sound that Thomas Skirksberg used to, um, you know, to uh, get for all the bands that played that sort of stuff. And uh, it's just it's raging, you know. It's, it just totally reminds me of you know Left Hand Path by Entombed and and like a Never Flowing Stream by Dismember. And in many ways, that's exactly what Black Breath do. It's it's. Um, you know, I mean, the point about Entombed to Dismember was that they were they were playing death metal, but they also listened to a lot of punk rock, so it had that kind of edge to it. You know, and they listened to Motorhead, and so that was in it too. And Black Breath are really just in that tradition, and and, and I think, um, you know, essentially, Sentence to Life is a metal record. Really, um, it's just you know, it's just got a real kind of hard, hardcore punk flavour to it as well, which which makes it very exciting. And I, and I like the fact that it. Um, that through that it opens the doors for people who probably wouldn't have ever listened to Entombed or Dismember or you know Swedish death metal or or even death metal at all you know and I mean it's not pure death metal in the sense it's not it doesn't sound like Suffocation or Cannibal Corpse but it's um, but it certainly sounds like a particular strand of death metal that's very important to the way the uh, the genre you know evolved overall so anyway I mean their previous album Heavy Breathing was was phenomenal um, a real kind of breath of fresh air really you know and uh, it's great to hear a band that you know that don't seem to have any hang ups about about playing you know extreme hardcore punk and death metal kind of simultaneously you know that that aren't kind of bothered about how people respond to that and I think the fact is that this kind of music has a real kind of rock and roll edge to it which means that it, it has the potential to appeal to a vast audience it's not just you know um, in the same way that bands like Cancer Bats do you know that, that they have a kind of universality of heaviness that 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 works you know and that will pull in people who like motorhead and will pull in people who like morbid angel and and you know people who like pop punk because it's it's recognizable on many levels um sentence to life is definitely i would say a step up from from heavy breathing um it's not that dissimilar frankly they've not changed their style at all um but i'd say the sound is better on it and overall i think it just edges it into uh, heavy breathing in terms of songwriting um i mean the first track feast of the damned is an absolute flipping neck wrecker it's just awesome um i mean you can you know that you can it's one of those records where you put it on and you can just imagine what the mosh pit is going to be like and how you're going to plan to avoid it because you don't want to lose your pint you know it's just going to be fucking mayhem um the the title track sentence to life again the incredibly catchy and there is a real hardcore vibe to it you know so the vocals are are probably closer to hardcore vocals than death metal vocals but that you know that that's been true in a lot of death metal as well you know the the the, the classic archetype of death metal vocals is not present in all death metal it's not you know it's no more essential than than singing about Satan or gore you know it's just that's you know probably the most popular approach to the vocals so you know the the singer's name escapes me in Black Breath but he's got a great voice that works perfectly well with this kind of stuff. He's actually not far away from Martin Van Drunen from um, Hail of Bullets and Asphyx actually in terms of his delivery because it's not a, a low growl, it's more a kind of harsh scream but anyway. Um, so yeah, it's just, you know, banger after banger as uh, my friend Terence would say. Um, I mean, they are just endlessly exciting songs, you know, and, and the guitar sound helps because that was always what made Entombed to Dismember sound so thrilling was just that the guitar sound was nasty, it's like chainsaws coming through the speakers, you know, and they've got that on this. Um, but there's diversity on here too, I mean, the last two tracks I think are fascinating really because the the Flame uh, is the penultimate track and it's quite a slow paced thing, it's got a little whiff of bolt thrower about it actually and um, whether or not that that's deliberate or whether that you know whether that's just incidental or, or whether that's just they did a slow one so therefore I automatically associate it with bolt thrower I don't know but but that's really powerful and it shows that they've got more in their armory than just doing the hardcore punk thing that they understand the kind of uh, the dynamics of metal a lot better than you would imagine from a band that allegedly share members with um, Shook Ones I think a pop punk band that I've never heard of I've never wished to but there you go uh, the final track Obey 
It's also kind of um, epic and, and, and mid-paced or slow-paced, um, and has a bit where, where everything drops out and there's just this bit of harmony guitar, uh, twi twin lead kind of harmony kicks in that just reminds me of Merciful Fate, you know, and and things like that. So it's you know there's a um, there's an intuitive understanding of of underground metal in Black Breath stuff, and so I think you know if anyone was put off by the fact that they've they've been described as a hardcore band, then I don't be because I think it's as metal as anything. You know, it's um, it's got the spirit of metal in it. Uh, you know, sonically, it's metal. It's just, it's also hardcore punk. And um, speaking as somebody who loves both of those things, it, I, you know, I couldn't be happy with a record like this. It's exactly the kind of thing I want to listen to. And I'm smashing my head against the wall and, uh, and um, you know, downing neat vodka or whatever it is that I do in my spare time. Who knows? Uh, but anyway, yeah, Sentence to Life by Black Breath. It's out on Southern Lord. Um, I really recommend it. I recommend going to see him live. I recommend um, supporting bands like this that. Uh, that don't have any kind of overtly commercial aspirations that are just doing, you know, passionate, heavy, brutal, fast, unpleasant music uh, out of a sheer love for it, you know. And um, and I think, you know, recent times have shown that some bands can push, you know, like uh, Cavell Attack is a great example. Some bands can come from the underground to do something quite original or at least something that's definitely not commercial and reach a bigger audience and get good opportunities and, you know, appeal to... Um, to fans from uh, lots of different areas of uh, the heavy music scene and the non-heavy music scene, you know. So Black Breath, Send Us to Life, fucking brilliant record. I really recommend you check it out. If it doesn't make you bang your head, you're probably a twat. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, there'll be more of this rubbish soon, I imagine. So um, grow your hair long, don't be a prick, and uh, see you soon. Cheers.